Well, hello, viewers, and welcome to tonight's virtual church. Apologies for the slightly late start. I just had a, a slight gremlin somewhere in the technology, but I think the gremlin has been booted out into the cold and to leave us with a solid, safe, and resilient and fun virtual church tonight. Good evening. How are you all? I hope you're all well. Please do say hello in the chat. I can see people chatting already. Um, very uh, early, thank you to, um, to Bill Rayty for gifting five channel memberships. Uh, so there are now actually five new channel members, uh, thanks to, to Bill. So thank you very much uh, for doing that. It's very generous. Greetings, Maurice. Um, James, hello. Johan, hello. Uh, thank you for your hellos. Right, well, what have we got tonight? Well, it might not surprise you that we've got some hymns tonight. Got a list, as usual. I've got my top five hymns behind, behind there as well. Um, so we actually have um, about 15 hymns already. Um, and then we can go into some live requests as usual. Wear my uniform. You can buy it from the shop listed right there. I want to know, has anybody received their merch yet? I know some people have bought uh, t-shirts and polo shirts. Have you yet received it? Let me know. So we're going to start tonight with All hail the power of Jesus name. Let angels prostrate fall. The angels uh, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Crown him. Crown him Lord of all. This is a request from Carmen Foster and it's for his sister Josephine who quite simply loves it.
I always like seeing people in the chat, where's the organ today? And to see whether anyone guesses it. Can you not tell by the stops that we're using? Look how big, this is the great division. Look how big it is. It goes all the way down to the 16 foot. It's got a horn on the grate. It's got a stop called a fugara. Does anyone know what it is? I'll let you know if someone says it um, identifies the correct organ. It is one of my favorite organs. So, all hail the power of Jesus' name, uh, as requested there by Carmen. So, thank you very much, Carmen, for requesting, as people have just been saying, a really good hymn to start virtual church. I like good hymns, and I especially like opening with good hymns. Um, if we start with a good hymn, then people will have more likely to have a good time, especially me. Puts us all in that sort of mood, doesn't it? So uh, here in the UK, we had harvest last week. I think it was, it was last week, wasn't it? I sort of lost track of time a little bit. One of the great harvest hymns is, of course, we plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. Um, and I've got this arrangement here, which I rather like. It is, it's called Dresden, and it's sort of a different harmony to what I'm used to. What I'll do, actually, what I'll do, 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 is I'll play a bit of naughtiness in this one, because this is a, this is a rousing hymn, and with rousing hymns, you can just afford to be a bit, a little bit naughty in them. You all know what I mean, don't you? Uh, so, if I... Go to 394 in this collection of stuff. Uh, have we got it? Oh, no. Maybe not then. So, this is a wee plan that goes on scatter and it has been requested by James Mossop.
I love waiting for the acoustic just to finish. In here, it goes on for absolutely ages. Absolutely ages. Still going, still going, going. Gone. It's like, wow, where's that acoustic? I didn't realize the acoustic in here was so good. <laughs> Who knew 1980s carpet was so reverberant? Someone has spotted the organ, uh, Stephen Brandt, I think, and I think a few others as well. D uh, Daniel as well has mentioned Doodle Lounge. We are, of course, in Doodle Lounge. It's been a while since we've been in Doodle Lounge, um, but we are here. We are in Doodle Lounge. I've got all the stops lined up and having a bit of a whale of a time, you could say. So I just want to say just very quickly to, th to those people who've bought one of these, a double CD set of my trio sonatas. <laughs> Hello. Is he asleep? Yeah. Ah, Hugo's asleep. <laughs> well done, Granny. Uh, trio sonatas, yes, a complete set here. Those people who've ordered them, um, the I've, I've had to buy some special envelopes to make sure they don't get cracked in the post. They arrived today, so these will be posted out tomorrow. Quick plug as well, if you want to buy one, they're on, they're on the website. See, see these are signed by me as well. All made in-house. Right, let's go on. We've got lots and lots to get through. Julian Goldring is up next. Um, with a really beautiful hymn. This is actually a choir to him. This organ does loud very well, doesn't it? It is um, very colourful. It's got lots of quiet stops. In fact, funny enough, uh, with this organ, when I play quietly, people say, we can't hear you. <laughs> listen, listen, if I play on the swell strings and uh, with the box closed, Open the box. There we go, the box is open. Um, this, the dynamic contrast on this organ is astonishing. Um, so the next hymn is, allows us just, I think, to explore some of the middle ground. Beautiful hymn called, um, the, hymn, the hymn itself is called Heron Gate, and the words are, it is a thing most wonderful, almost too wonderful to be, that God's own son should come from heaven and die to save a child uh, like me. I can just see Robert. Wow, that's very kind. That's very generous of you. Thank you uh, so much. That means so much. Um, Roger, thank you for becoming a channel member. Rev Jonathan as well, thanks for your... Uh, it's your birthday. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hope, I do hope everyone else has, has already wished you happy birthday. Uh, and as uh, Bill Ratey as well, thank you for gifting five channel memberships. Your generosity is, um, is astonishing. It really means a lot to me. So thank you very much. So, Julian Goldring. I'm in a really good mood now. I'm in a really good mood. Let's, let's, what should we have? Let's have the a corne down on the um, this manual, what do you call it? The choir, accompanied by some flutes here and there. It is a thing most wonderful. And I'll tell you what, doing virtual church with you is a thing most wonderful. Yes, I've got an animated tip jar on the screen. I'm just trying it out. If you if you bounce the balls hard enough, they, they can bounce out and if it, if it gets full, I think it might fall over. I don't know. We'll have to try it. It's the first time I've used it. <laughs> A bit of fun.
think that tune is a thing most wonderful. It really is such a gorgeous tune, isn't it? Is that a well-known tune over in America? I hope so. I think it must, that must be a worldwide tune. This is actually from a really old hymn book. And you can see by the quality of the scan, it's actually sort of sepia color rather than white. Can you see that? And also the font is a very old font. Gorgeous tune. So thank you very much um, for to Julian, for Julian Gildring, for requesting that. It's called Heron Gate. We've got a top five coming up, top five hymns. We're actually now getting to the back um, of the queue. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? The queue it has made its way to the front. <laughs> I know what I'm trying to say. I hope you're trying, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. I had a backlog of top five lists and we've actually now almost made our way through them. So now is the time for people, um, oh Robert, what on earth? This program is a blessing and a nice distraction from <laughs> from <laughs> from planks and squats in the gym. Now, Robert, you're just making me feel bad because I haven't done my um, my exercise in two weeks. Two weeks. I've fallen off the bandwagon already. I must get back on it tomorrow. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings are my days for exercise. I try to. Um, trying to do exercise I'm trying the things once you get out of the routine of doing it it's very hard to then get back into doing it isn't it um, so Robert that's so generous really kind and I love the idea of you working out doing your squats <laughs> do a bit of virtual church excellent that's a great image I think more people should do squats to virtual church frankly <laughs> um, right common foster you're in luck you're in luck because you've got another request coming up. I um, Lo, an angel loud proclaiming. Mm. The tune is called Zion. It's from another very old hymn book look. And I, I, I don't know this at all. So um, Carmen says um, that he loves the words of hope. Let me tell you what, uh, let me tell you what they are. They're from Revelation 14, chapter chapter. Uh, sorry, chapter 14, verses 6 to 12. Lo, an angel loud proclaiming brings the gospel of good cheer. Yay. Every kindred, tongue, and people fear the Lord soon to appear. Um, proclamation of the hour of judgment near. Proclamation, pause mark, of the hour of judgment near. Let's not forget the pause mark. Uh, okay, it's by Thomas Hastings. And the tune is called, I'm not sure whether I've said it already, but I'll say it again. It's called Zion. And it goes a little bit like this. I have to stop there because I don't know what happened there. <laughs> we went into a very strange key, didn't we? And I thought to myself, that is so incredibly wrong that I can't possibly go on. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I've never done that before in my entire life. Oh well, there's only 213 people witnessed it. Here we go. Let's try it again with multi-camera. It wasn't even like I could, I could hide because I was on the multi-camera.
Pretty cool that, Carmen, thank you. I don't know where, you've, where you found that, um, but it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Pretty harmless, pretty uplifting, pretty good pause mark towards the end as well, that worked. It's a bit cheesy, but it works. And yeah, and without the weird key change halfway through, I think it actually works rather well. <laughs> Naughty hand. I think it just, I don't know, I can't explain what happened, it was just, I think my la hand landed up in the wrong place on the keyboard, which yeah, it sometimes does do that, but not to that, that, that extent. <laughs> that was bizarre. On our way, your rejoicing gladly let us go, has been requested by Daniel. Daniel did um, correctly identify the organ, so well done, Dan. Um, on our way, let me go down to my uh, alphabetically ordered BIS iPad hymnal. So, on our way rejoicing, as we homeward move, hearken to our praises, O thou God of love. Is there grief or sadness? Thou our joy shalt be, is our, uh, is our sky be clouded, there is light with thee. Then there's a refrain, on our way rejoicing, as we homeward move, hearken to our praises, O thou God of love. So, the tune is called Hermas, and um, the words, I think, are by John Monsell. That means anything to anyone? And it's been requested by Daniel Kubaki.
raspy reed indeed, Bill. Yes. Good tune that, Daniel. I really like that one. Thank you for sending it through. Um, it was good. I think that was um, one of the... Yeah, it was good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. So thank you. Let's have that one again in the future. I, I, I was really fond of that one. I think it was a good tempo as well. If I may say so myself, even though I've never played it before in my entire life. I somehow managed to f to fluff a tempo that I think quite worked. Just um, catch up with the, some of the donations. Uh, Jim, thank you very much for your $20. Carmen, uh, thank you for your $20. Um, um, RW... This is my dyslexia. It takes me a long time to work out how to pronounce these unfamiliar words. Widico. R R W R Widico. Thank you very much for your 200. That's amazing. Robert, your 199. Have I said thank you that already? No, I haven't. That's astonishing. That really is astonishing behaviour. I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much, everyone. It just makes doing this such a privilege. You know, in May last year, I left my office in London for the very last time to do this, to take a, a gamble, a big gamble, leaving behind a very, very stable job with a, an average London salary. It was okay. It wasn't fantastic, but it was okay. It was stable, a good pension. I left all that behind to do this and to see your generosity like tonight is, uh, it just makes me feel on top of the world. Thank you so much. Um, however, I did see a comment from um, Barbara Clark, who said, Richard doesn't make many mistakes. Well, Barbara, I would say you obviously don't listen carefully enough <laughs> because, oh yes, I do. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, no, thank you all so much. Uh, Nick Knack, um, I, I can't play that tonight. It, it, it is, it's rusty. But I will, I will put that in the backlog and I will um, get it out and dust off the rust, even though you can't, can you? Rust is there forever. Um, it is a bit dusty rather than rusty. Thank you for your 10. Wow. Roger Richards, what have, what have you asked for? Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. I think we should all sing tonight. I just think we should all sing. I, I wish there was a thousand people watching and then we could all sing together. A thousand voices singing together. Um, what am I looking for? Yeah, there it is. Oh, four thousand. Which tune are we going to have? Asmon. This is not a familiar tune to me. Overly familiar. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, we have. We've had it before. Um, Roger, I, I've, I, I'm missing your um, reason. Um, you put. I'm playing this hymn in a church. I can't, that's all I can see. So you, you're obviously playing it in a church. So I hope I can play it correctly. Barbara, let's see if we can um, not play any wrong notes and, and um, help Roger on his way. I'm just flabbergasted, astonished by your generosity tonight. Thank you all so much.
the French writer, that's a lovely hymn. And for a thousand tongues to sing, my dear, my great Redeemer's praise. A different translation. I'm used to my dear Redeemer's praise there. Uh, words by Charles Wesley. Uh, apparently it was a little bit slow. Well, there we go. So maybe next time we'll have it a little bit faster. Maybe next time we'll have it a little bit slower. I don't know. Sometimes I, um, when playing all of these many hundreds of hymns on a monthly basis, um, and I'll play it again, you know, in a few months' time, it will be different because I'm just in a different mood, perhaps. I was in a bit of a sort of a majestic mood that time due to all of your generosities just now. So, um, yeah. There we go. So let's go on. We've got a few more hymns to get through before we get into our top five tonight. It's a really good list, as always. I am thine. Oh Lord. In fact, no, before we have that, have we got, um, do we have a Liam in the congregation? Congregation, come on Richard. Audience in the viewership. Do we have a Liam watching who requested a piece by uh, Charles Hubert Hastings Parry, which is just simply known as, um, well, uh, Tranquilly. It's titleless. And is Liam in? Liam uh, has, he said, he has exams starting tomorrow and this calming piece would be perfect for revision. So it's about five to nine on a Sunday night. Uh, that was about, yeah, that was me. Yep, revising last minute on a Sunday night before exams the next day. So hopefully, um, Liam, if you are in, I hope you get to watch this, or listen to this before you do your exam tomorrow. I hope it gives you some inspiration. So, <laughs> hey, welcome, Jay. Uh, however you pronounce your surname, I, I, I can't. You know what I'm like. I'm terrible with uh, names. It's my dyslexia. I can't, I can't bring together the vowels and the letters to make sense. Um, Hattie is. Is that right? It's probably entirely wrong. But welcome. Welcome, he says. OMG, um, oh my goodness, I finally, ca finally caught a live stream, exciting. Well, I'm very excited to have you. And I'm very excited to have 230 odd people uh, watching live, so. Jen, that's much easier. Jen, I can, work, I can go with Jen. <laughs> I can go with Jen. Right, so that's just two, two pages of this beautiful piece by Parry. Some of you will know it, some of you will not. Perfect, perfect for a pre service, um, pre-service wallpaper, organ wallpaper, basically something that just sits in the background and creates a bit of atmosphere, sets the mood. This is perfect. I've played this a lot in those circumstances. So I'm going to have just some flutes, nothing more than that. There's some very beautiful flutes in this organ. And Liam, this is for you. Good luck tomorrow, my friend. This is why I'm moving off sheet music onto iPads.
let's let's just have another go at that because it's such a beautiful piece music sheet music often lets me down by doing that um let's have another go because it is such a beautiful piece anyway um wouldn't do any harm just to give it another go barbara there weren't any wrong notes that time but the page didn't want to turn and i'm sorry but i i wanted to play it all the way through without any issue for liam so liam's actually got it one and a half times Let's go back to the multicam. In fact, I'm going to add another flute on the grate. I'm going to add quite a big one. No, I'm not. Yeah, no, uh, you know, I'm going to add the gemshorn on the on the grate just to add a little bit of colour. Here we go again. I think it was worth having it one and a half times actually because it is beautiful it's so short perfectly formed and it is just the perfect sort of piece to play before an even song it is indeed from the little organ um not from the the little organ book of course the orgel buchlein but this is a little organ book orgel buchlein i suppose yes in memory of um, hubert parry uh, composers in here uh, such as a lot of these were very famous english Organists, uh, Stanford uh, Brewer, Alan Gray, uh, Ivor Atkins, Frank Bridge, Harold Dark, Charles Wood, Walter Alcock, Thalbin Ball, and Walford Davis, and a few others as well. And very well known figures in here. It's well worth having, actually, having up your sleeve for um, if it's just if you need a piece quick to play and something quite straightforward. That's a good one to have. Ben Wallace has sent me a high quality scan as always and Ben's uh, scans are very high quality aren't they yeah. uh, good old hymnary Lord with glowing heart I praise thee Lord with glowing heart I praise thee to a tune uh, called Ripley
Here are the words to verse 1. Uh, Lord, with a gl glowing heart, I praise thee for the bliss thy love bestows, for the pardoning grace that saves me and the peace that from it flows. Help, O God, my weak endeavour, this dull soul to rapture raise. Thou must light the flame, or never can my love be warmed to praise. Uh, once again, to the tune Ripley. Anyone know this? Let me know if you know this. Now, let's get this tempo right, shall we? So it's... I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it on a little bit, this one. This one looks like it needs to shift a little bit. So let's get the choir trumpet and use that for the verse one to set the tune. Oh, let's get rid of, let's get rid of that. Cool, right, here we go, Ben. Bill, you were very close actually, yeah, the Coro Anglais. So actually it was the clarinet with the um, all of the foundation stops. Just adds a little bit of sonority underneath it. 
and I was inspired because I was playing, I wasn't playing at all, I was hearing someone play an organ recital last night in Salisbury Cathedral, the famous, um, world famous organ here in England. David Briggs was giving a recital um, and it was just amazing to, to hear that organ played like that, um, David ending with an improvisation and just getting these colours out of the organ that you just thought, how is he doing that? Um, and it was really fascinating because he had a big projector screen at the front of the nave, huge screen. I mean, it would put all of our TVs to shame. It must have been, oh, I don't know. It was, it was ginormous. It was like a, a small cinema screen and it was very high quality. And um, because um, I, have, I now have the Salisbury sample set, um, and I know where the stops are. I was able to see which stops were coming out and going in and identifying that he was using things like the clarinet, which is over on the solo on this side, um, with the, um, the solo string and the flute uh, and the oboe on the solo, coupled down to a bit of the, the eight foot uh, diapasons and the eight foot reeds and the swell. He started with um, this. Second Kral uh, by Franck, and just he got this really beautiful sound. For, oddly enough, funny enough, when I the last recital I gave at Salisbury, I also played that, and I have a recording of it somewhere. So I'll have to go back and have a listen to see whether uh, our registrations um, align. I can guarantee you that David's registrations were far better than mine. So that now takes us into um, our top five today. Um, let's have a look. So I'll count down from five, go, going into number one. Count backwards. Um, if you would like to uh, send me your top five, then please do. Virtualchurch at beautyandsound.co.uk Today's top five comes uh, from our very own um, uh, James. James Palmer, and James is a, um, he's a, what are you, James? You're a very, I don't know what the word is here, dedicated uh, listener and also um, producer. He, he helps me, along with a few others, um, uh, like uh, Josh Wilson uh, often helps. Uh, actually, I think Josh and um, James largely are the sort of the two main people who help behind the scenes. But James has sent me the top five today and I'm very grateful for your top five and for also your work behind the scenes. And it was good to meet you the other week down in Chichester. I saw this person in the congregation I said to Caroline, is that James Palmer? Because I, all I have to go on I don't know, James, all I have to go on is your uh, avatar, which is that size. So all I can see is your very extravagant beard and your eyes. I can't see your hair. So I saw someone who looks like that on the front row in the audience. I said, is, is, that, is that James? So we clarified it was you. We didn't want to come over and sort of say, hello, James. Like, who's James? My name isn't James, it's Edward. <laughs> oh, crumbs. Anyway, it was also nice to meet some BIS subscribers last night. I don't know if is anybody watching who um, were, was at Salisbury last night. Um, good to meet uh, quite a few people there. Um, I didn't manage to get my drink in the end because by the time I'd finished talking to all, all, of, um, all of the viewers, um, the wine had been put away. <laughs> no, my wine. Oh, I was ready for some wine. Robert, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's add the Elizabethan serenade whenever if you, we have to find what that is. We'll put that in the backlog. We'll find out what it is. I don't know what, offhand what it is and we'll definitely have it at some point. It means more than you can possibly imagine what you guys are doing tonight. Anyway, top five, James Palmer. Thank you very much. He says, this is, this is number five. 
I just need to grab my NEH actually before we um, start. I need to go to number 401. And he says about this tune, this hymn. <clears throat> this hymn to this tune was sung as a prof uh, was sung uh, by a professional at the Commonwealth Day uh, service at Westminster Abbey in March 2017. As the royal family walked up the nave, um, the heralds trumpeted and the choir sang an absolutely awesome descant to the final verse. Hmm, I don't think I have that. It gave me goosebumps every time I hear it or read the words to the hymn. Richard, give this one all you've got. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Okay, well let me get let me get a bit of raw thorn then. I can't I can't handle that pressure, James. I need to get a, I need to have some more raw thorn on the music desk to help me out here. The tune is called Regent Square, number two hundred and sixty-five in here. The words that James is going to be singing at the top of his lungs are Blessed City Heavenly Salem to the tune um, Regent Square. Let me just see how many verses there are actually. Um, I'll give you, f I'll give you, f uh, yeah, I'll give you all the verses. Five verses of this terrific hymn.
So that was number five in James's list. Blessed City, Heavenly Salem to the tune Regent Square. Thank you very much, uh, Bill, for your donation of uh, five channel memberships. You've just made five people very happy. Uh, thank you very much. Of course, not everyone can or is able to become a channel member. So people who, uh, who buy channel memberships just like that allow people to become channel members uh, for a month. So thank you very much, Bill, for your generosity. Number four in James's list, top five, actually was um, one of the hymns sung at um, our little Hugo's christening. So this one, um, we have a strong affinity to this particular one. Again, a mix uh, for me of wonderful words and a cracking tune. Would you mind reading out the Methodist verse three, which are the words by John, John Dion, John, by John Dunyon, uh, not the modernized verse, which um, isn't as good. So here's verse three, the original words. These are good words. Hobgoblin, nor foul fiend, can daunt his spirit. He knows he at the end shall life inherit, then fancies fly away. He'll fear not what men say. He'll labor night and day to be a pilgrim, of course. You all know the words there. So he who would valiant be against all disaster. Wonderful, wonderful hymn this. definitely one of mine and I know it's one of Caroline's favorite hymns as well I'll labor night and day to be a pilgrim wonderful wonderful words number three in James's list he says this particular hymn is a firm BC favorite and I'll tell you what it is in a minute 
I know it is very frequently played, but I would be lying if I didn't include this in my top five. I have chosen this hymn because as a teenager, I had a tape cassette of uh, Bach's music, uh, which I listened to on my Walkman. Who remembers those? That shows how old I am. Well, I had one as well, actually, I did. Uh, we had one in the car, I had a CD player, and then I um, had a um, Sony Walk, uh, a mini disc, they were called, yes. I love that mini disc. And I fell in love, not with just the music, but with the choir's singing, which was, of course, in German. So if you play this for me, I will be humming along in German. How does one hum in German? I wonder, James, if you can let us know how you can hum in German. It's like me playing that uh, Cortège et Litanie the other day, playing it in French. <laughs> Coincidentally, this was the first hymn you played for us on the 28th of June 2020, which was my second VC and my first ever request. Um, and it was also requested by someone else called Scott. <laughs> I wonder if he is still with us, James says. Anyway, perhaps you could dedicate this to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, 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 perhaps you could dedicate this to YouTube <laughs> for the good it has done in enabling us all to come together. Yes, well, okay, I think YouTube gets a lot of um, flack for a lot, its many, many failings, but I think on this occasion we will dedicate um, Rejoice Today with one accord, Ein Festerberg, to YouTube, <laughs> to Mr. Google itself. Um, this definitely is a VC favourite. Um, um, we've had it a lot, but I, it, that is absolutely fine. I think this is a terrific hymn, and we are going to have um, the uh, J.S. Bach version, of course. Okay, so here we go.
Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Great hymn, isn't it? Not surprised it was um, during lockdown when we first started doing VC in anger regularly every week. Um, and when it, when it really took off, that was the one that kept coming up. It was that one. Incidentally, when we did our um, when I did my top twenty hymns, which was calculated by uh, by requests, so it was it was it, it was um, a factual top twenty. It wasn't just a best guess; it was factual. It wasn't number one, and I was quite surprised. Proves my soul, the King of Heaven, was of course number one. Uh, but that, I think that was in there somewhere. Anyway, let's go on to number two in James's list. In the church my family attended when I was young, this hymn in the book we were using had only one verse. The first one. I'll tell you in a moment. We would frequently have favourite hymn nights uh, at which this would always make an appearance. Um, which, we would, which we would sing whilst remain seated. As it is quite short, we would sing that verse twice. It was usually in the lead up to prayer uh, and is one of the more simple, quiet, meditative hymns. It was about the only occasion <laughs> when Methodists sing quietly. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with good gusto in hymn singing, is there? We like that. Actually, the meth of course, Charles Wesley, the great, the great uh, Methodist, wrote some just astonishing hymns, didn't he? Some of the great, greatest hymns, I think. So, we actually have three verses in this version that James has sent through. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Okay, I think it maybe is one verse. And then it says, The Lord Almighty is our God. And it repeats, The God of Jacob is our rock. And it repeats. So it's more like, you know, the words are fairly akin to something like a Taze um, uh, chant. You know, re re repeated. Or you could say it's more like a litany. So we, we discussed... Well, I discussed in front of the microphone what a, lit a litany meant the other day on my Dupre video. A litany is something that's repeated um, liturgically. Um, so this is, you could say this is a litany. Be still and know that I am God.
very beautiful. Some of those quieter hymns are sometimes the most beautiful, aren't they? Sometimes less is more. And when you repeat the words like you do in this one, you actually really get to think about what the words are saying, what they actually mean. So that was number two in James's list. It takes us into number one. And he says this, let me just have a look. Um, I am choosing this hymn for two reasons. We are sometimes inclined, especially as music lovers, to love music without giving much thought to the words. What was I just saying? This hymn has both beautiful music and beautiful words. It was sung in St. Paul's Cathedral for the first memorial to the victims of the Grenfell uh, Tower fire in 2017. And I wondered if you wouldn't mind reading out the third verse, which I like in particular. Well, for those people who uh, live outside of the UK, probably won't know what um, happened to Grenfell Tower. Well, in 2017, unfortunately, it caught fire um, in such a way very quickly, so the Grenfell Tower was a, um, a high-rise apartment block in central London. Uh, so lots of apartments, very, very high, uh, caught fire, um, and the whole building went up very, very quickly. And it was a, a disaster, just an extraordinary disaster because people were trapped, literally trapped in the building. It was very similar and very um, reminiscent of um, New York um, with people trapped, not able to get down from the tower. So the firefighters were helpless. Uh, it was awful. 2017, um, I remember being in London on that day. I was, I was working in London and the, the whole, it was, it was in the morning. It, it happened early, very early morning, um, like five or six o'clock in the morning. And when I got into London, um, you could see um, the sky was uh, like covered in, it was dark, it was foggy. Um, it was over sort of um, on the east part of London. So a few miles out of central London where I worked. And it, by that point, the fire had yet taken its sort of holding on the tower, but it hadn't made sort of uh, national headlines yet. But you could just see this mist ahead and as the day progressed it just got worse and worse and got going out um, for lunch you just you looked over in that direction and you just see this horrible smoke um, so he wants me to read out um, the third verse which I will um, all that kills abundant living let it from the earth be banned pride of status race or schooling dogmas that obscure your plan in our common quest for justice may we hollow life's brief span so verse one is for the healing of the nations lord we pray with one accord for a just and equal sharing of the things that earth affords to a life of love in action help us rise and pledge our uh, our Word. The tune is called Alleluia Dulce Carmen uh, and it has been harmonised at least by William Henry Monk. I don't know where it originates from. It says melody and, melody and bass from an essay of the church plain chant in 1782. And this is number one in James's list. A very poignant uh, reason for choosing this one James so thank you very much
relevant, um, really good top five hymns there, James. Thank you very much for coming all. Uh, please hand it to James for uh, suggesting those wonderful hymns. Thank you very much. Uh, James, please do, please do everyone show James your appreciation. Now, we've done that, we can now go on to our live requests. So Caroline is actually gigging tonight. She's singing, she's entertaining, um, she's entertaining uh, audiences um, with her beautiful singing. So she's not here, so I'm by myself. We've got Granny who's looking after Hugo. I think she's doing a very good job. So let's have a look at some of these requests. So let's make sure that I can um, get them all out. It's Bill Rati, Jeez You Lover of My Soul. That's a good one, isn't it? Let's have that. Jeez You Lover, 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 Lover. Uh, hasn't made it yet into my hymnal. But luckily, I know in here it's 383. I don't, this is one of those hymns that I know. <laughs> I think it's one of my favorite hymns. Abra Wisworth. You know, the first tune, actually, by John Dykes is actually really good as well. Hollingside. It's a good tune. Perhaps, if you'll let me, I'll play verse one to Hollingside, and then I'll go with verse two, three, and four to Abra Wisworth. I think verse one actually gets overshadowed by Joseph Parry's beautiful very famous tune. Um, I don't think I really need a, need any raw thorn for this one. It does not really don't need to do much to it because it's already stunning enough as it is. Let's see if it's done anything. I haven't really done much to it actually. Well, yeah, because like I say, it's not much she can do. Okay, here we go. So this is uh, our first live request tonight. This comes in from, um, from Bill Ratey. He's been very generous tonight.
of the few hymns where a T.S. de Picard D would, I think, argumentally be um, acceptable. Uh, mm. Spring thou up within my heart, rise to all eternity. There are other hymns which I would normally do a T.S. de Picard D is at the end of 40 days and 40 nights. On that wonderful D major chord. So thank you very much, Bill, for requesting that. Um, what else are we up to? Nick Knack wanted um, Nun Dan Kataligot by Bach. That's not in the rep um, read readily, so I just need to make sure that that's um, sort of practiced a little bit. Uh, King Laudrup um, has requested I bind unto myself this day, the wonderful uh, Irish tune is called uh, St. Patrick's Breastplate, number 149 in the NEH. What does he put about it? Uh, uh, you may recall a scan. Uh, yes, well, I, I do recall it, but I don't have it to hand, unfortunately. So I'll have to just make sure. I'll just do a bit of um, NEH version. This, this one's all right, isn't it? Uh, arranged here by Stanford, Charles Villiers Stanford. I've had a great time tonight with you guys. Really, really enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it so far? What has been your favourite hymn of the evening? Question for you to answer as I'm playing this. Had a bit of a brain trump there. I was just looking. Um, sorry to interrupt. I, I, of course, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ever do this if I was playing in a church. But there's a verse where the words are quite menacing, and I really want to find it. It's actually in verse one, is it? Verse one. It is. No, verse two. It was in verse two. He's bursting from the spicer tomb. 
He's riding up the heavenly way. He's coming at the day of doom. I bind unto myself today. I was looking for that. And then my mind was taken up music and then I sort of lost my place. Let's, what should we do? Let's have, um, let's just have verse two again with those words. Verse two, and then we'll, I'll give you one more verse after that. Verse 6 would have ended, uh, praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is the Christ, is of Christ the Lord. Yay! That's a positive uh, way to end. I can't possibly end in G minor with the words like that, I don't think. King, I hope that was all right for you. Great, it's a great hymn that, isn't it, actually? Really powerful, striking stuff. Um, right, let's have a look at these other requests. Lewis Harvey, yay, praise my soul, the king of heaven, please. You can have that. To so those people uh, who've become channel members today, got, due to um, the generosity of Bill, uh, we actually have um, a number of new channel members. So if you have, if you ever got a notification in the chat saying would you like to accept gifts something along those lines you need to have clicked yes for, um, and then someone like Bill can then uh, generously buy five ten or however many channel memberships and then if you're lucky you will get one of those free channel memberships those people who are now channel members so new people and people who've been in the club for a while and of course the patrons. Patrons have been um, patrons. Uh, that's sort of a long-lasting thing. So the option of doing channel memberships or patron. I don't really mind which one. Which one you do. Just be, be in mind that YouTube take a bit more of a cut of the channel membership um, membership cost. Patron is much much smaller. However. Those people who are now channel members can, if you go onto the membership page of my channel, 
see me and listen to me playing the Interstellar Suite. Four movements um, of um, the, the soundtrack to the famous fil film Interstellar, composed by Hans Zimmer. You can now go and see that. Um, I've actually made quite a few tweaks since I recorded that. Uh, and I'm going to record it on a very, very fine cathedral organ in a couple of weeks' time. That's a really, really exciting thing. It might not be for you, but for me, that's a very, very exciting thing. Having um, been given access to one of the best organs in this country to record the Interstellar Suite is something that I could have only dreamed of. The good news is I'm going to record it with all of my equipment, my cameras, and we're going to bring it to you in, it will be almost certainly in 4K <laughs> and with the highest quality audio possible so i'm really 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 excited about that so if you want to go and have a sneak peek at an early version of it um you can you can you can go and have a look at my channel membership page and it's on there so now uh, lewis harvey has requested praise my soul the king of heaven people saying cat Daniel had it on the uh, nail 
That Binala. Well, it was. No Bobs isn't around. Our little Bobby. I don't know where Bobby is. Bobby doesn't often come in. Although she, Bill, if truth be told, I think, you know, things often happen in this room when I'm playing, when the microphones are turned off. Things happen behind me, which if you just knew what was going on, you would <laughs> be very amused. And she came in earlier, our Bobs. Um, and was hovering down on my left hand side and she looked like, I thought just for a few seconds, I thought she had a mouse because she was sort of stood and just doing something on the floor. So I, I looked, I don't know if you can rewind at some point and see me looking in that direction. She didn't, she was just, I think she, I think maybe Hugo had um, thrown a bit of uh, mincemeat on the floor earlier and she, she was eating that. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past Bob's or Nort's. I call her Nort's because she's Naughty Nala and her nickname is Nort's in this house. Nort's. I wouldn't put it past them to bring in a mouse or something else. Right, where are we up to? So, Lewis, that was for you. Um, I think the last one, uh, Josh. Uh, what's that? Ian Garden sending me pictures of you drinking bottles of wine, making me feel very, very jealous. <laughs> Ian Garden is one of our regulars uh, who sometimes helps uh, with a bit of producing. And uh, he is, a, by all accounts, in a restaurant in Gran Canaria because he's just sent, to, sent us a picture of what looks like a very nice bottle of wine. Half, almost drunk actually, and he, he actually asks for, uh, he hopes that we can recognise uh, Vaughan Williams 150th birthday ah, on the 12th of October. Did you know that? RVW's birthday is on the 12th of October and he's 150. I didn't know that. And he, he asks for a live performance of Rosie Merger. Hmm. Well. We could do that, couldn't we? Uh, and uh, Bill Ratey, um, very generous um, uh, viewer tonight, has asked for, I heard the voice of Jesus say. Well, we can do that. I think it might be in my iPad. Um, BIS hymnal, let's have a look. If it's not, it's in, there, there it is, King's Fold. I heard the voice of Jesus say, what does he say? What does Okay, cool. Well, let's just have a go at this one. Then we will have a bit of Rosie Medra. And then, uh, if there are no more requests, um, we'll play a bit of a voluntary, I think. Mm. I need to eat. I need to decide what to play for voluntary. So if you have any requests for a voluntary, please do let me know. Give me some ideas. Otherwise, I'll just do something. So if you want a request, it is indeed uh, Vaughan Williams, Bill, well done. If you want a voluntary of your choosing, speak up now.
a real stonking tune there called King's Fold. Um, harmonized and adapted by the great man uh, Rafe Vaughan Williams himself. And it's been brought to our attention that it is um, um, Uncle Ralph's 150th birthday on the 12th of October, which I think is on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday the 12th. So I think what we should do is um, have Rosie Medra played live and then we'll have the voluntary. Lewis Harvey has been the only person to actually put any money down uh, for a voluntary and he's uh, asked for the Crown Imperial. What do you think, guys? Shall we have a bit of Crown Imperial? I'm happy to play that if you'd like it. Uh, Alan, you just put a message. Uh, can my request be carried through to next week? Yes, well, what I, I always, if I miss any hymns, if, if any hymns, I don't have access to the request form live, uh, but if I miss any, um, basically I always play hymns from the uh, request form. If I miss them in one week, they do roll over to the next week. So yes, indeed. Okay, so we'll, in honour of his birthday, let's have Rosie Major. You hear me play this every week. At the end, it's our sort of a rolling credits theme tune, isn't it? But you never see me playing it. You always hear me playing it. So you can actually see me playing it now. Um, I don't know whether I've ever played it on this, this particular organ before. Would be nice to do so. I've just I've, I realised as I'm a bit older now. I used to when I first learned this piece. I used to do some elaborate crescendos in this towards the end. Um, but I realised over time that actually less is more in this piece. It's really effective, just not to do that. And it's really effective as a simple. A simple composition, a simple reflective wallpaper piece. So that's what I'll do. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Yep. So Rosie Major played live.
And now for something a little bit different. Hope you enjoy tonight's organ voluntary. So suggested and sponsored by, um, by Lewis Harvey.
<laughs> Crown Imperial there. Uh, written for the coronation in the 1930s. Arranged uh, by Herbert Murrell uh, and McVeigh as well. A lot of, lot of sort of stuff happening there on the fly. It's really, if you listen to the orchestral version, the original version, there is so much missing from this Herbert Murrell arrangement. So much. It's just calling out for a, um, a Le Maire arrangement, you know, with a very over the top, flamboyant, and lots of notes, almost unplayable. But it's a really fab piece nonetheless. Lewis, I think it was a good choice. I think uh, hopefully people enjoyed that. So thank you very much, everyone, for your just your company tonight, your company and your generosity uh, both tonight and over the past however long we've been doing it. Um, when I said earlier that when I walked out of that office for the last time last year, last May, it was a step into the uh, a step into uncertainty, put it that way. And it was a it was a now or never moment. And I think very much it was a now moment. Um, and with your donations like tonight, it just makes it um, so reassuring. So thank you very much. The next big project, as you all know, is of course uh, to find a new home for this organ. Don't panic. It's not going anywhere. It's just going to be relocated into a different room, which is over that side of the house. They're going to have a music room built over there, um, which will be far more appropriate. We'll have proper lighting and it will be just so much better in every possible conceivable way. And that's the next project, big project. Um, but everything that you donate now is going into that. A couple of years, yes, that's, that's basically what it will take, I think, to um, to get it all done. Um, but I'll take you along the journey. Once it all starts, I'll take you along the journey, show you updates, and we'll have, obviously have a grand opening as and when. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. Thank you very much, James Palmer, for your um, top five wonderful hymns there. Uh, and also thank you very much to Josh Wilson, who's been uh, keeping an eye on stuff for me, uh, making a note of um, sort of what's being said and capturing all of your requests. So thank you very much to Josh. Thank you very much um, just for tuning in and then I hope you've enjoyed it. And please do leave me a comment on the video. I, I sort of missed your chat when I asked you what was your favorite hymn. Um, leave me a comment. So go back after I've clicked end stream, go back and leave me a comment. Uh, let me know what your favorite hymn was. Oh, if you haven't already, just click like on this button. That would be really useful. I find that really, really useful. YouTube likes that. And yeah, I'm not gonna say anything more now. I think that this, this, um, this tip jar is pretty full. I'll take that. I can't, I can't seem to get it, which is a bit annoying. Maybe it, it's stuck in cyberspace. Um, because my, my tip jar looks rather empty. That one looks a bit, I want, to, I want that one. I want that one. How do I get it? Um, so until next week, I will say cheerio. Good night, everyone. Take care. And you stay safe. You're going to hear me play the Bone Williams again now. <laughs> Goodbye.